Welcome to Monday's episode. Today is... Monday, May 18th, and it's No Dirty Dishes Day. Ooh, that's a lie. There's gonna be a lot of dirty dishes in here today. <laughs> it's also Tina Fey's birthday. Oh, I love Tina Fey so much. Uh, happy birthday, Tina Fey. Happy birthday, Tina Fey. My name is Alexandria. This is Michael. And today we are making a cheesecake. Welcome to the full measure. Welcome to The Full Measure. If you haven't seen our show before, you can actually now check out an introduction video that we just made last week. If you're new to the channel, what we do here is we like to make a dish in two ways. The first way we make it is the super simple way that most folks would make at home, but we try to like add a little bit to it just to make it a little bit better. We call that the half measure, and then we make it the more complicated or involved way, and we call that the full measure. At the end of the video, we tell you whether doing the full measure recipe is worth all the time and worth all the effort. Today, we are making Cheesecake. What are your feelings? Delicious. Oh, big feelings. Cheesecake is one of my favorite desserts. Big F feelings. I don't think I've ever set foot in a cheesecake factory. Oh, I have. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean that as a place of judgment, because even foodie friends I know say that the cheesecake there is like top tier for sure. So I don't know if I've had cheesecake at the cheesecake factory. Oh, you were trying to flex with all your confidence a second ago though. The two ways we'll make the cheesecakes today are, the first one's just directly from Philadelphia's website, the one that pretty much everybody's had actually. The Keebler ready-made crust. This is a pie crust right from the grocery store. That's the super simple way and we'll make it a little bit better. We're gonna add a little bit of like lemon zest and, and lemon juice to it. The full measure recipe is actually an article from 1963 in the New York Times. It was- What a year. It's kind of the classic New York cheesecake recipe and all the research that I did said that it pretty much still can't be beat. So. I thought that that was a really good baseline to just make a, an involved cheesecake that you can make at home. I'm like getting all tight and like salivating just thinking about it. Getting all tight. Let's make some cheesecake. <laughs> yeah. These are all of the ingredients you'll need to make the half measure recipe. One ingredient we will add is lemon. We will use both the zest and the juice. The cream cheese needs to be at room temperature to properly incorporate into the filling. And if you're like me, you literally forget every single time to take the cream cheese out before you make it. If you cut the cream cheese into small cubes and put them on a plate, that'll help get them to temperature a little bit quicker, especially if you give them a little poke to flatten them out a bit. You could also put these plates on top of your oven while they preheat and it'll speed it up a bit. They'll be good to go in about 15 to 20 minutes. Speaking of preheating, Let's get the oven up to 325 degrees and start making the cheesecake in the bowl of a stand mixer fitted with the paddle attachment. Add two packages of room temperature cream cheese, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a half a cup of sugar, and set the mixer to medium speed and beat until just a little fluffy, about three minutes. I like to remove the paddle while I add both of my eggs, makes it a little easier. Return the paddle to the mixer and set at a low speed and mix until just combined. This last step could also be done in the mixer itself, but I wanted to show how we zest our lemon. Use a microplane or a fine grater and move in just one single motion. Be careful not to push too hard. You don't want any of the white part, just the yellow. The entire lemon will give you just a little more than a teaspoon of zest. Add that and the juice from half of the lemon and give it a good stir. Everything gets poured into a pre-made graham cracker crust and then into the preheated oven for 40 minutes or until the middle is just set and still a little bit jiggly. Take it out of the oven and let it cool before putting it into the fridge for at least three hours or overnight. You want this to sit and chill for a while because it needs to be served cold. Again, cheesecake is one of my most favorite desserts ever. Even this very basic recipe is something that shouldn't be left around me unintended. Adding the lemon is such a simple step to give just a little bit of brightness against all the rich cream cheese, and it does make it taste slightly more like authentic New York style cheesecake. Let's give this classic a taste. Yeah, so we got these teeny tiny little spoons for desserts. Yeah. Because she likes anything that's teeny and tiny. But it also just makes it feel so like luxurious when you have this teeny tiny bite. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. That's pretty good. How do you, what do you think about that lemon in there? It's real good. Oh, yeah. It's nice to have that little bit of like acid that cuts through, cause it's so rich. I mean, it's just so, it's cream cheese and sugar and eggs. And so that little bit of acid just like cuts through and makes it a little bit bright. It has a lemon flavor to it, but it doesn't taste like a lemon cheesecake. It's just right. bright. Mm. 
which I think is really good. I think, I think it's pretty tasty, but it's- I think it's really good. Yeah, I mean, and especially considering like this took like 40 minutes to make, it was super, super easy. I think maybe the bigger takeaway for me is not even necessarily about the cheesecake, but the, the pie crust. There's no reason to make, like, you know, when you crumble up the graham crackers and then make your own, this pie crust is really good, and it was like two dollars. Crumbled up the graham crackers for you. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you could just skip that step. The only reason I would maybe do it is to change the flavor of the crust. Like if you're gonna do oh, Oreo, like cookie or something. Actually, my favorite ginger cheesecake. Snaps. Yeah, my favorite cheesecake crust is made out of ginger snaps. So it's the same process that you normally would follow with the graham crackers. You just do it with ginger snaps, and it's so good. It's so so good. Honestly, it's really good. That's really good. Yeah. Um, we know what we have to do now. Well, let's go make the full measure cheesecake. Come on. This recipe for deluxe cheesecake was first published in the New York Times by Craig Claiborne. This is everything for the filling. The card that has the footage for the crust ingredients bit the dust, so this will have to do. Apologies. We start with the butter. Very cold is best. The crust for this is not the familiar graham cracker crust found in the first recipe, but more similar to an actual pie crust that would be used in a cafe or diner. So cold butter it is. Next, grab your food processor and add one cup of flour, a quarter teaspoon of sugar, and one stick of the cold cubed butter to the bowl. Pulse this together until it's crumbly and sandy. If you don't have a food processor, you could also do this with a pastry blender. You can complete the rest of this in the food processor, but I chose to mix it in a separate bowl. Add one teaspoon of lemon zest, a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract, and one egg yolk that has been lightly beaten. Mix this together until everything is hydrated. It won't form a dough, but it will clump together like a drier than normal pie dough. This cheesecake, like most great cheesecake, is constructed in a springform pan. Take the sides off and press about one third of the dough mixture onto the bottom of the pan and bake this at 400 degrees for about six minutes or until it's golden. Remove it from the oven and let it cool for about 10 minutes. Next, butter the outside spring portion of the springform pan with unsalted butter and reattach to the base. Using the rest of the mixture, form the sides of the crust about two inches up the walls. This doesn't have to be pretty, just try to get the thickness somewhat similar all the way around. Set this aside while you mix the filling. For the filling, grab five, yes, five, let's count them, one, two, three, four, five, ah, 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 packages of cream cheese and put them into the bowl of a stand mixer and beat with the paddle for about three minutes or until fluffy. Add one teaspoon of lemon zest and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract and continue mixing while you combine your one and three quarter cup sugar, three tablespoons of flour, and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. This is to help make it a little easier when you combine it with the cream cheese. Incorporate this mixture in three batches, allowing to fully combine between each addition. Next, add five whole eggs and two egg yolks to the mixture, one at a time, again, allowing them to fully incorporate each time. Lastly, add a quarter of a cup of heavy cream and beat on a medium speed for three minutes. Finally, pour the filling into the springform pan. If you have any extra, you can bake this little brother cheesecake in a souffle dish or a ramekin. These both go into a 475 degree oven for the f Actually, let's pause. I'm sure some of you are probably yelling, why no steam bath or boiling water? A lot of recipes tell you to bake the cheesecake in an oven with steam being produced from a bath of water under the cake. This is an attempt to prevent the inevitable cracks from forming as the filling bakes. I've tried this method and several variations a few times, and you know what? It never works. If you use a steam bath and you can get it to work, please leave your secrets in the comments. But now, back to the show. These bake at 475 degrees for 10 minutes, then you lower your oven to 200 degrees and bake for another hour. One hour later. After your hour is up, turn the oven off and prop the door open and let the cheesecake cool for 30 minutes in the oven. A few moments later. Take it out and let it completely cool on the countertop before wrapping with foil or plastic wrap and putting into the fridge for at least three hours or overnight. Again, this needs to be served chilled. One eternity later. Yes, there is a giant crack in the cheesecake, but you know what? I kind of like it. I just really like cheesecake, and this was a lot of fun in the kitchen. To serve, remove the outer portion, use a damp paper towel or kitchen towel, and wet your knife between each slice. This helps prevent the cake from sticking to the knife and keeps things a little cleaner. I also sliced up some strawberries to serve alongside the cheesecake. You could use pretty much any fruit or berry here, totally optional. A lot of work, yeah. A lot of steps. Also, yeah. Delicious? No, it was terrible. I'm kidding. Worth the time and the effort, though. Let's find out. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. And open them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might need a little more than a tiny. <laughs> Much more massive. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's really pretty. I love the like. 
Oh, I don't know why we gotta hit it. <laughs> Good lord. Ooh. Ooh. That tastes like something you would get at a restaurant. Like 100%. Or like you would order from somewhere or whatever. So, feel, I mean, it feels restaurant quality. Yeah. I think the biggest difference immediately is the texture. Yes. This it's one's like, very smooth. It's smooth and fluffy and... It's just a completely different experience. Yeah. But I will say, and maybe this is just my affinity for cheese, I just really like cheesecake. <laughs> that other one. Also very good. It was, it's not a t It's not saying that this one isn't good or that one is almost as good as this one. It's saying that, that for that low amount of work, that was a really good payoff for that other cheesecake. Both options, you're gonna have a, a good cheesecake. Yeah, it definitely doesn't have the graham cracker crust that like a lot of people expect. Um, it has like more traditional like pie crust. How do you feel about that? I feel like it's nice because you just get so, so much of the filling. <laughs> the other one just has like a very monotone like sweet sugar flavor. This feels very delicate and I think it's a little yeah, bit yeah. because of the process. Let's take a look at where these fall on the chart. This is our chart of worth itness, where we measure how much effort we put into a dish versus how much payoff it gives back. The half measure cheesecake was obviously pretty simple, just a few steps and only took about 40 minutes to bake, and it tastes pretty good. And the full measure cheesecake definitely was more work, it wasn't the most we've done in the show, and it tastes delicious. It's hard for me to judge because I'm so biased due to my love of cheesecake. I'd say either recipe is gonna work very well for you. The big difference between the two is just the texture and the overall experience. The full measure cheesecake definitely feels more high end and more restaurant quality. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully you can check out some of our other videos as well on our channel. Last week we also launched a Patreon and we have a full website where all of these recipes are available. I'll link all of that stuff in the description. If you don't mind giving us a thumbs up on this video, that helps a lot. And then definitely leave us a comment if there's any food that you'd like us to try to make or any food that you're curious about, whether it's worth the time to make the full measure version of it or if there's an easier way that tastes just as good with a lot less work. If you do happen to make any food or end up cooking anything that you've seen on the show, or if we've just inspired you to get into the kitchen at all, take a photo and tag us on Instagram or Twitter or mention us in your stories. We absolutely love seeing that. That's just like such a great reward for both of us. And we'll share. We'll and we'll, share. Yeah, and we'll share it out, yeah. Thank you again for watching this video. This has been The Full Measure and we'll see you next time. Bye. We can eat the cake, yeah. yeah. <laughs>